Hey there, it's me Jadron, and in this video I'm going to talk about center of mass. And before that, I just want to let you guys know, right now I'm recording this video which is 22nd of April 2023. So in Malaysia, right now it's Hari Raya and which means it's Malay New Year. And Malays right now are enjoying their time with their family and playing firecrackers. And in this video, you might hear some firecracker noises. And also, I want to let you guys know that I use this physics course book to teach this center of mass chapter. And if you are interested on this book, you can check it in the description down below. And also for this center of mass chapter in this book, it's page 60 and page 61. And also I will share my notes from my iPad in the description down below. So the center of mass is basically a dot which causes no turning effect. And sometimes it can act and sometimes it can act like a and sometimes it can act like a pivot. And furthermore it can act like a and and furthermore it represents and furthermore it represents the whole mass of an object okay so let's talk about the turning effect of the sense of mass so so I'm just going to draw a metal bar okay a long one a metal bar a long metal bar okay and I have suspended this metal bar to a string okay suspend means hang which means I have hung this metal bar with a string okay so this metal bar causes no turning effect which means it's just remain still it will not rotate there is no turning effect in it Okay, but why? Why is it? The reason is simple. The center of mass is just under the string. The point where the string is pulling this metal bar. So every molecules or particles in this metal bar, it has gravity force in it. Okay? every molecules or particles has a gravity force in it okay and we know that clockwise moment and anti-clockwise moment it's equilibrium Hold on, uh, maybe I will just write causes no turning effect or which is equilibrium. Okay, so this is the principle of clockwise and anti-clockwise moment. I'm just going to put this maybe here. So right now, let's look at this side first, okay? We do not look at this side. So, so right now, here, the left-hand side, there is force, right? If there is force, and the center of mass sometimes can act like a pivot, okay? So the formula of moment is moment. Maybe this is, hmm, this is anti-clockwise moment, right? Anti-clockwise moment it's equals to force times perpendicular distance from the p word okay so this is the formula of turning effect moment 
So right here, maybe, so right here, let's take these molecules, this particle, for example. So here to here, we have a distance of maybe 5, 5 cm. I'm just going to erase this because I need more space. I'm just going to put D. Distance, perpendicular distance. And I'm going to put this on top of maybe here. Here, and I'm just going to circle it. The formula red pen. Okay, so the, so let's say, let's say just for example, okay, just for example, let's say this molecule, it weighs maybe, maybe one kg, okay, just for example, it's not that heavy, just for example, so one kg, if we turn it to force, the, the formula of force is F equals to MA, the M is mass, the A is acceleration. So force equals to M, which is the mass in kg, 1 times 10. And again, it's just for example, the mass of this molecule, it's not that heavy. Just for example, it's easier for me to explain and maybe it's easier for you to understand it. So, which is 10 newtons, okay? So the formula of turning effect, I, I will just put, I will just put it as T E turning effect equals to F times D, which is 10 times 5 cm, which is 50 Nm, right? So the turning effect of this, of this, um, anti-clockwise moment, anti-clockwise moment, it's 50 Nm. Let me just put here 50 Nm. And right now we have done for the left-hand side one, and right now we have to calculate the turning effect of the right-hand side. So, and again, just for example, this molecule, it weighs 1 kg, just for example, it's not that heavy, and again, F equals to MA, and the distance, I will put it as 5 cm, 5 cm, okay? So, hold on. So, F equals to 1 times 10, which is the gravitational acceleration, which is, so, wait, 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 50 times 10, yeah, yeah, so 10 newtons. Okay, so the force of these molecules is 10 newtons. So, F T E turning effect equal to F times D, which is the F is 10 times 5 and 50 Nm, okay? So the clockwise moment, it's 50 Nm as well. So I will just put here clockwise and here anti-clockwise, okay? And I'm just going to erase all of my working because I need more space here. Okay. So just now, so just now I've said that the center of mass causes no turning effect, right? Which means F equals to, no, it's T E equals to F times D. The formula of force is F equals to MA, right? So MA, so I'm just going to sub this in. So MA times D. So the distance can be zero, can be no distance. But we can't ignore the mass because mass is constant. The mass is always constant, keep in mind. So MA times, I will just put this as zero, okay? So, zero, yeah. So, MA times zero is zero. So, there is no turning effect. So, I do not need this equal anymore. Okay. 
Okay. I'm just going to put this aside first. Okay. So the M here, the M here represents the whole mass of an object. Okay. So I'm going to put a line. So right now, just now I've said that clockwise, this anti-clockwise moment and the clockwise moments causes zero turning effect, which means equilibrium. There is no turning effect. So let's put this, let's say this f times d equals to f times d. This is 5. Hold on. This is 10 times 5 cm times 5 cm which we cut it there is no turning effect which means this center of mass which means the center of mass it's right here I've proved it to you okay so just let me quickly erase this first just let me quickly erase this guy here okay so the previous hold on so the previous example i've showed you there is no turning effect right the metal bar remains in steel motion which means it's not rotating no turning effect but right now what happens if we suspend the metal bar in a different position so the turn, so, so the center of mass remains the same in the middle and by the way, if the material of the metal bar is uniform, which means the whole thing maybe if made out of iron, so the center of mass most likely will be at the center. And if you and if a metal bar maybe here you made it of iron and maybe you made it of copper, so the copper it's heavier it's heavier than the iron i will just put a shorter arrow a shorter arrow so the center of mass most likely to be here okay in this direction in this on the right hand side the center of mass switches position only if the material it's not uniform which means it's not the same but in this case if this metal bar is made out of, in this case, if the whole metal bar is made out of iron, the center of mass most likely to be in the center, okay? Because those molecules or particles, I will just say molecules, if you made it of copper, it's become more heavier, right? The molecule on, the, on this side, this copper, will be heavier, heavier, and this guy most likely to be lighter. So the center of mass will be on the left hand side, or at the right hand side. Okay, so let's get back to where we have stopped just now. Okay. And again, this metal bar made out of uniform material, which means the whole thing made out of the same material, I would just say iron, okay? Any, any metal, as long as it's uniform, as long as the whole metal bar is made out of maybe copper. So the whole thing, the center of mass most likely to be at the center because it's uniform material. That is very, very important. So let's get back to where we have stopped. And again, I will draw a molecule one on the left and one on the right so it have same mass which means same force so let's use so let's use back the force just now which is 1 kg which means 1 newton okay because oh sorry which is 10 newtons because 1 times 10 is 10 okay so here 10 newton as well the mass is 1 kg I'm just going to choose a larger eraser. So right now, I suspend this iron bar, a metal bar. I'm just going to name it as iron bar. 
I'm going to suspend this iron bar in this position. The string is right here. It's more to the left hand side. Okay. So if we so if I hang this metal bar like this, this metal bar will have clockwise turning effect. Okay. The reason is simple. The third point right here, the third point. The center of mass represents the wall mass of an object, which means if this metal bar weighs 100 kg, which means if you put it in the force, a thousand newtons. So this guy will exit a force to. So wait, hold on. So this will be our new pivot, right? This will be our new pivot point. So what happens if you have maybe hmm. okay? So the distance here, let's say just now is five here, five here, which means that the total is ten. So I will just put here as seven. The distance it's seven cm and here three cm because the previous metal bar I use. 5 on the left and 5 on the right. So 5 plus 5 is 10. So 7 plus 3 is 10. Okay. So this will be our new pivot point. So the turning effect of this metal bar will be because the center of mass represents the full mass of an object. This is clockwise moment. Okay. I'm, go I'm just going to erase this. I will write clockwise moment so the distance here to here let me just quickly erase this okay the distance from this guy this pivot this is our pivot to here maybe we will we will have 2 cm right so 2 f times d f times d f times d the force is a thousand newtons times 2 cm which is 2000 newtons times cm and cm which is the clockwise moment so that is why this this guy right here it will have a turning effect of clockwise moment it will have clockwise moment turning effect so this guy moves let me just draw it here this guy will be like this the center of mass will be like this rotate so it will have a turning effect like this this is what it's so this is what it looks like when you hang this string at different position but not on top of the center of mass the point you will, you will have this effect okay so let's try the another example. Okay, so let me explain in a different way. Okay. So right now let's take an example. Let's say a bus, right? A bus, a double decker bus. double-decker bus and compared to a bus that has only one layer okay it has one layer okay so this is the bus so this is double-decker this is not double-decker it has only one layer and I do not know what it calls the bus with only one level or one layer I'm just going to call it as a single layer bus, okay? So right here, the center of mass of this bus is here. I'm just going to put a red dot, a very red one, and the dot is here for this. So if you compare both of these buses, the left hand side, the double decker bus, will most likely topple, right? Most likely to fall if we till it. So what do I mean is that 
What did I mean is that let's let me just write an arrow represent the force, the total mass of an object. If we tilt this bus, this double decker bus, and this is a ground. The center of mass, let me just let me just write this line here. Let me just erase this guy. Okay, I'm just going to draw it on the line. It's easier for me. Okay, on the line, okay? So this guy crosses the pivot point. Right now, we have a new pivot point which is here. The wheel that is in contact with the ground. Pivot, okay? So, let me draw this bus, a single layer bus. Okay. If we tilt this bus, just for example, it's impossible for us humans to tilt a bus, but just for example. Okay. In theory, it will not cross the pivot point. Okay, the pivot point. Pivot, okay. So in theory, if we compare both of these buses, the left hand side, the double decker bus, the double decker bus with taller, right? The double decker bus with the center of mass here, it will have a turning effect of clockwise moment. As soon as the center of mass passes through this pivot point, turning effect equals to F times D. As soon as this D occurs, it will have a turning effect. What do I mean is that right here we can right here we can see the P word, right? The P word and it has a distance of may of maybe I do not know an unknown distance. I know that there is distance. So if there is force, there is distance, it will have turning effect. As soon as this, let me just draw this, okay? As soon as this sense of mass passes through this pivot, it will have a distance. If the center of mass, let me just redraw it. This is a pivot, okay? Let me just redraw it. So let's say this is a pivot and my center of mass, it's, it's here. It passes through, because the distance is perpendicular distance, which is here, we're just going to take the distance here to here because it's perpendicular distance. But what happens, what happens if we did not pass the pivot point, which means there is no distance. So if you don't have distance, there is no turning effect and the bus will not topple, will not fall. But right now, in this case, the center of mass passes through the pivot point or the line, the perpendicular line, it will have distance. As soon as you have distance, there is turning effect. And the force here, and the force here, it's constant on Earth, okay? Because F equals to MA and there is, and the bus has its own mass and the A right here is the gravitational acceleration, which is near to... 10 ms squared. So as soon as you have force, you have distance, so there is turning effect. But why if we tilt this bus, this one layer bus, single layer bus, it will not fall, it will not topple. Because the reason is simple, in this case, the pivot point is here. Let me just draw a line, a perpendicular distance. Um, the center of mass, it's here. I know the center of mass does not lies on top of the pivot. There is distance, but but the turning effect is different. The turning effect we will have anti-clockwise turning effect, which means this bus it will 
it will go to its original position, original position like this, because the bus will have anti-clockwise moment, so which means it will not go in this direction. It will not tilt. It will go. It will go to the anti-clockwise moment direction. So that is why this bus is most likely to be formed. Most no oh no. So that is why this bus most likely to be toppled most likely to fall and this bus most likely it's harder to till it until it fall until it falls and this bus right here if you want to till it it's quite hard for you to make it fall okay because the, the center of mass is very low so speaking of low lower and higher center of mass in this case here let me just erase no, let me just go to the another page. Okay. Speaking of higher and lower center of mass, if the height, if you increase in height, if you increase in the height, the center of mass will be center of mass. Let me just put it in a short form. C O M center of mass will be higher and if you have let me just this is this arrow it's shorter the center of mass will be lower okay and just now I have proved it to you and this is a bus a bus a double decker bus Okay, the center of mass here, it's here. Most likely to be here, to be at the center, maybe. And the single layer bus, the center of mass, it's right here. Okay. So if I draw a line here, which means the COM, the center of mass, is higher and the com of this bus it's lower okay so like just now if you tilt this bus it's easier to pass through the pivot point that is why it's easier to fall and for this guy right here this single layer bus right here it's more it's harder to make it fall because the center of mass of this bus is very very low so it's harder to pass through the pivot point okay so let me just erase this guy right here so you can copy this down on your ipad maybe on your notebook it's very very important so there are a few types of names which we call it as state of equilibrium okay so so this right here if you have the physics cost book which i had shown just now you go to page 61 and you will find this states of equilibrium so let me just draw a line so we have stable equilibrium which is let me just draw a triangle okay just let me draw a tri triangle wait hold on let me just draw a base so this is a ground and I have a triangle here so if you tell it to the left hand side this will be the pivot if you tilt if you tilt this triangle to my right hand side or to your right hand side the pivot point will be here okay the pivot point so right now we have a distance right a distance and a distance so the turning effect we have clockwise and anti-clockwise turning effect and for this reason the and for this reason the name we call it as stable equilibrium okay so i'm just going to erase this d 
And the next one, let me just let me just put a star there. It's easier for us to see. So the next one, it's we call it S. Let me see. The next one, it's unstable equilibrium. So and again, I will take this triangle like this. I will put it upside down. Okay, just like this. Okay, this triangle, I will put it upside down. The center of mass, it's here. It's the same, the center of mass. Okay. So right here, if you put it like this, the pivot point will be at here. This is the pivot point, right? So the center of mass lies on top of the pivot point, but it's too dangerous. Okay, it's too dangerous because because turning effect t equals to e equals to f times d the f is constant this this dot here is the sense of mass so let me so let us just talk about wind if there is wind if wind passes you you will experience a force right so if you exit a force here this guy most likely to have a clockwise turning effect because f times d even most likely maybe very less very less distance occurs but there is still turning effect that is why it's too dangerous so we call it this as unstable equilibrium so i will just put a bracket below the unstable word i will just put dangerous because it's extremely dangerous because even a little bit of distance will cause turning effect that is why it's too dangerous and I'm going to erase this. And the last one, the last one, we call it as neutral equilibrium. Okay. So let me just draw a base here. Let me just draw a base here. And I will draw a circle. This circle, okay, and the center of mass, it's here, okay. So the pivot point of the circle, it's here, it lies on top. So the reason we call this circle as neutral equilibrium is because whenever, if you push this circle, the center of mass will always lies on top of the pivot point, okay. So I'm just going to add a flash card here. Flash card means you have you have lesser word compared to note, but it has the same meaning. The center of mass, which is C O M, C O M center of mass, is always lies on top of the pivot point okay pivot point okay so that is why the circle we call it as neutral equilibrium okay we have stable equilibrium which is stable the clockwise moment and the anti-clockwise moment it's the same it's equal that is why we call it as stable equilibrium and for this unstable equilibrium it's because it's too dangerous as long as you have a little bit of distance there is an effect it will cause a thing to topple or to fall and the reason we call it for and the reason we call it as neutral equilibrium is because the circle let's just say circle the circle the center of mass of the circle always lies on top of the pivot point so whenever it rolls it's still the same the center of mass always lies on top of the pivot point so that's it for this video. I hope you have understood what I have just explained. And if you have the course book like what I have shown just now, the physics course book, you go to page 61 and you will find this diagram here. And you will find this page like this one. Okay? So I will see you guys in the next video. Do remember to subscribe to my channel to enhance my algorithm. So see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.